Wednesday evening. Hi, everyone. So find a way that you'd like to start. I just offered that if some of you have a block, you can begin to open the shoulders, which was a request today by setting it just under the bottom tips of your shoulder blades, right about here. You may start on the lowest high. You could also roll up a towel and make it cylindrical and just line it up where the bra strap would be. And if you have a second block to rest your head on, you can place that underneath your skull. Otherwise, you can just let the head completely release down so that it allows your chest to open up and shoulders release downward and away from your neck. If you don't have any props like that, find a way to start that's comfortable for you to just get settled in. So yesterday, we talked about the power of vulnerability. And some of you may know the author, uh, Dr. Brene Brown, and she wrote many best-selling books, including Daring Greatly. So I wanna move on to something connected to vulnerability, and that is shame. Such an interesting topic, especially during these times. Um, for those of you that weren't here with us yesterday, Dr. Brene Brown is a research professor who spent the past two decades studying courage, vulnerability, shame, and empathy. She defined shame as this, the intensely painful feeling that we're unworthy of love and belonging. She says that it's lethal and it's an epidemic in our culture affecting how we see ourselves and each other. It's associated with depression, anxiety, grief, eating disorders, and even addictions and violence. And it relies on three things to grow. Secrecy, silence, and judgment. She says that the difference between I am a screw up, saying that to yourself, which is the voice of shame, and I screwed up, just acknowledging that you made a mistake, may look small, but in fact, it's huge. Many of us will spend our entire lives trying to slog through the shame swampland to get to a place where we can give ourselves permission to be both imperfect and to believe we are enough. She says that I think the people who wade into discomfort and vulnerability and tell the truth about their stories are the real badasses in the world. and. This is especially true of people who rumble with failure. These are people who choose courage over comfort, accountability over blame. Blame, she says, is a way to discharge pain and discomfort. And they're able to embed key learnings from failures into their lives. And then she says that failure can become our most powerful path to learning if we're willing to choose courage over comfort. So what is the antidote to shame? For her, it's empathy with four attributes, according to Teresa Weissman, a nursing scholar, to be able to see the world as others see it, to be non-judgmental, to understand another person's feelings, and to communicate your understanding of that person's feelings. According to Shauna Shapiro, a PhD who authored the book, The Art, of, and science of mindfulness, she says the antidote to shame is vulnerability, kindness, and compassion. Self-compassion especially gives us the courage to see things clearly, to be able to say to yourself kindly, ooh, ouch, I did that and I don't wanna do it again. We need to approach ourselves and our pain with kindness. And self-compassion can help us rediscover our goodness, dignity, and purpose and help reverse years of self-judgment and shame. But it takes practice, just like yoga. Last person I want to quote is Dr. Kristen Neff. She's co-founder of the Center for Mindful Self-Compassion. And she defines self-compassion as a practice of goodwill, not necessary good feelings. And with self-compassion, we mindfully accept that the moment is painful and embrace ourselves with kindness and care in response, remembering that imperfection is part of the shared human experience. So I want to end with these 11 affirmations that you might resonate maybe with one or a few on self-compassion. And maybe this could be built into your intention if it aligns with why you're here tonight. One, 
I accept the best and worst aspects of who I am. Two, changing is never simple, but it's easier if I stop being hard on myself. Three, my mistakes just show that I'm growing and learning. Four, it's okay to make mistakes and forgive myself. Five, I am free to let go of others' judgments. Six, it's safe for me to show kindness to myself. Seven, I deserve compassion, tenderness, and empathy from myself. Eight, I release myself with forgiveness from today and move forward with self-love to tomorrow. 10, I forgive myself and accept my flaws because nobody is perfect. And 11, I'm not the first person to have felt this way and I won't be the last, but I'm growing. So if you're still lying down, please gently begin to make your way up to sit tall, grounded, maybe placing the hands together at the heart, connect with the way your body is breathing and the way that you are feeling. Like we don't only practice warrior two once and we're done with it. Self-compassion itself is a journey of repeated practice. So let's bring that into how we move our bodies and focus our minds and breathe. And then we'll carry it into a specific meditation practice at the end. If you have another intention to set, clarify that. Take a deep inhale, grounding to your sitting bones. And then through the mouth, exhale and lift up taller through the center of your spine while relaxing the shoulders down. Let's try that twice more. Inhaling, firm down through the pelvis. Fill up space within your belly. And through the mouth, draw the breath out, lifting up to your crown, to your heart. One more time, breathe in, fill up fully and through the mouth exhale completely i'm gonna take you through a pranayama breath practice that is nicknamed yogic coffee i just learned that about it it's called bellows breath pratika i'll demonstrate first and we can do it together i'll watch the clock for one minute um, it's done sitting up tall, shoulders are relaxed. You begin with the elbows bent by your sides, making gentle fists. And then we take a deep inhalation, raise the arms and spread the fingers, expanding into the belly. So you really want to use your diaphragm. Breathe deep into the belly like you're about to sing. And then exhale through the nose, kind of like breath of fire. So it's like deep breath in and big breath out through the nose. Everything is through the nose. So if you start to feel lightheaded for some reason, uh, just pause and take deep breaths because it is called yoga coffee by nickname. So <laughs> sit up tall, bring your elbows out to the sides. Take a deep breath in, arms up and exhale. Keep going. Take a deep breath in, relax the arms down on your lap, and open the mouth, exhale slowly. Close the eyes and just breathe naturally for a moment and pause to observe how you're feeling. That breathing technique is 
known to energize you as well as help to clear the mind. And building heat as we prepare to move the body. So let's continue that heat building using Ujjayi Pranayama. Closing the lips, softly narrowing the back of your throat and steadying the breath evenly in and out through the nose while creating a soft whispering sound. Keeping that breath going. Let's lie down on our backs flat and we're gonna move into two rounds of bridge pose in and out, one breath each, and then we'll hold the third round for five to 10 deep breaths. So begin lying on your back with your knees bent, feet hips width apart, parallel, and place your arms straight down by your sides. Have your feet where you could almost touch your heels with your fingertips, but not quite. And as you press down through toes spread, heels down, breathe in to lift the hips off the floor, arms stay by your sides, and then stretch the fronts of your thighs forward as you tilt the chin slightly back, opening the chest. With a full exhalation through the nose, lower the upper back, the middle back, and eventually the tailbone. So try that once more at your own pace of breath. A full inhalation to rise up into bridge. Then the exhalation takes you back down. Feel the full expansion of the side ribs, your collarbones, and even into the belly as you breathe in. And then after the second round, prepare to hold bridge, staying lifted for your own count of five to 10 deep breaths. So as you're ready, lifting up, tilting the chin slightly back, slide the upper arms closer together under your back ribs, maybe even interlace the fingers. Just as long as you keep the arms straight, you don't wanna flare the elbows apart because that counter um, counters the action of opening the fronts of the shoulders. Now feel the energy of your legs, engage your hamstrings and lightly your glutes by energetically but not visibly dragging your heels back towards your glutes while actively lengthening your tailbone forward towards the space between your knees. Slightly rotate the inner thighs towards the floor, keeping the thighs parallel. So you decide when you're ready to come down using an exhalation to feel the articulation of lowering one vertebra at a time. Slow and controlled. Mindful movements. And once your pelvis meets the floor, separate the feet about as wide as the width of your mat. With your knees still bent, drop both knees over to the right, aligning your left knee down the midline of your mat. Now, if you want a deeper stretch in the left side of your lower back here, pick up your right foot and cross it just above your left knee onto your left thigh. And just allow the weight of that right leg naturally to help release the left hip closer to the ground. You might even like to add raising the arms overhead. This will give the shoulders a bit of a stretch too. Bending the elbows to frame your head and catching opposite elbows with your hands. Now keep softening the shoulder blades down your back. Open the space at your throat. And let's take three more deep breaths. In through the nose, soft whisper. Just the slow out through the nose, soft whisper. If your knees are sensitive, especially the left knee here, you can flex your feet to help support the knees. Now at the end of this exhalation, unwind your legs, keep the knees bent and separate the feet again about mat width. Release the arms and then drop your knees to the left, pointing the right knee down the center line of your mat. Now, if you want to feel this is a deeper stretch in the right side of your psoas, pick up your left foot, cross the left foot just above your right knee onto your thigh. And then if you like to add the arms, try switching the cross of the elbow on top. Keep lengthening through the sides of your neck, taking just about three more deep breaths. Now, without using much force, just intention, Feel the right side of your pelvis soften closer to the ground. As you finish this breath, uncross the legs, bend your knees into your chest and begin to rock and roll side to side or forward and back a few times. 
so that you can eventually lift your body upright and come down to all fours, your hands and knees. Let's take a few rounds of cat-cow. If you'd like to stretch your wrists, you can spin out the fingertips, you can flip the palms, however you wanna set up your hands. On an in-breath, stretch your lower spine from your pelvis and then coil your chest up into cow pose, rolling the shoulders down the back. As you exhale, contract the belly, tucking the tailbone under your body, drop the skull and round the back, cat pose. And take about four more cycles, just moving to your own pace of breath. And if you'd like to move laterally or make it a longer range, moving through child's pose, feel free to change it up. As with any of our movements, any of our postures, the way that you need to. That ability to tailor your practice and really tune into how you're feeling right now in each moment is part of our practice of self-compassion in the physical. When you finish this last cycle, relax to a neutral spine and let's prepare for thread the needle by walking the wrists a couple inches in front of your shoulders. Then inhaling to raise your left arm up before exhaling to thread it underneath your right bent elbow. Resting the left side of your head either on the ground or maybe on a block. Flare your right elbow up towards the sky and slide both shoulders down your back. Level out your two hips and then keep rotating the ribcage gently. Let's take two last deep breaths here. Feel the backs of your lungs expand. If you need to stay longer for any reason, feel free. But if you're ready to lift yourself back to all fours and prepare for the second side. Inhaling to raise your right arm, exhaling to slide it under the left bent elbow. Rest the right side of your head all the way down Flare the left elbow towards the sky. Relax the shoulders away from your neck, balancing out your two hips. Breathe into the space between your shoulder blades, especially. Couple more breaths, unless you're deciding to stay longer. As you feel ready, make your way into downward facing dog where you can take a few breaths to shift around in any way to really get the spine to lengthen, the neck to loosen. You might warm up the backs of your legs as well by pedaling your feet. Feel your breath flowing. In downward dog, spreading your fingers wide, shoulders width apart, wrap the triceps towards the ground, lift the shoulders high, hips back, bend the knees as much as you might need, especially in the beginning, to feel the full length of your spine. Press the fronts of your thigh bones back and hug the belly towards the spine. Let's hold still now for three more deep breaths. Though you're holding still, feel the energy in movement. You're grounding through finger spread as though beyond your fingertips, your energy reaches and dives further into the earth. Beyond your hip bones, your energy reaches and lifts up towards the sky, drawing the weight back. Now at the end of this exhalation, walk or lightly jump your feet to the top of your mat in a forward fold. Spreading the toes, shift your weight forward and press your legs to the floor. Inhale to lengthen halfway up. Slide the shoulders down the back. Exhale, fold in. Firming down through your feet. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead to rise up. Exhale, bring your hands together to the heart. Let's move through the three types of sun salutations, beginning in sun salutation B. We're gonna go right into a continuous flow. So listen carefully and take slow breaths so you don't feel rushed. With arms by your sides, start. Inhale, raise your arms overhead. Exhale, bow forward. 
Inhale, lengthen halfway up, lower the fingertips. Exhale, step left knee back to a kneeling lunge. Raise the arms as you breathe in, then circle your hands to the floor. Exhale, stepping into plank and lowering forward, then down, all the way down. Inhale into cobra, lifting your chest. Press through the hands and exhale, lift the hips to downward facing dog, where we'll hold for one deep breath, in and out through the nose. Then inhale, raise your left leg behind you. As you exhale, softly land the foot inside of your left hand and lower your right knee, kneeling lunge. Raise the arms as you inhale and lift the chest. Then circle the hands to the front of your mat. Exhale, step forward to bow. Press through both feet and inhale, rise up, sweeping the arms overhead to stand. Exhale, your hands together apart. Let's do the second side, last one. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway up. Lower the fingertips, step right knee back. Then inhale, raise the arms and lift the chest. Circle the hands to the floor and plank. Exhaling as you lower forward, then down. All the way down. Inhale, cobra. Press to your hands. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's pause for one deep breath. And downward dog, inhale, raise the right leg. As you exhale, step the foot just inside of your right hand, lower the back knee. Inhale, raise your arms and lift your chest. Circle the hands to the top of your mat and exhale, step forward to fold. Inhale, raise the arms and rise to stand. Exhale, the hands together at your heart. Two sun salutation A's. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. This time, step into your plank pose, unless you want to jump into chaturanga. Lowering as you exhale. Inhale to cobra or upward facing duck. Exhale to downward facing duck. So here, hold three to five breaths. Remember that the Surya Namaskars or sun salutations are meant to energize, help to warm up the body physically, supporting us to be more open and safe when we hold other postures. But they're also a moving meditation, helping to focus the mind through repetitive movement and rhythmic breath, synchronized. Let's take one more sun salutation A. At the end of your exhalation, lightly land at the top of your mat. Inhale, lengthen halfway up. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, rise, gazing up as the palms meet and salute. Exhale, energy from the sun to within to the heart center. One more. Inhale, the arms up in Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bow towards the earth in Uttanasana. Inhale, lift the heart in Ardha Uttanasana. Either step to plank or jump back to Chaturanga to lower. Inhale into your choice, Cobra Bhujangasana or Upward Dog, Urdhva Mukhasvanasana. And then we'll meet in Downward Dog, Adho Mukhasvanasana, taking three to five breaths. Just as we honor the movements, find balance in honoring stillness. As you feel ready, at the end of your exhalation, lightly land at the top of your mat, forward fold. Inhale to Ardha Uttanasana, looking forward. Exhale, fold to Uttanasana. Raising the arms, inhale, rise to Urdhva Asthasana. Exhale, the hands together at the heart, Tadasana. So let's take two rounds of the last sun salutation, B. Excuse me, yeah, B. We started with C. I made a mistake earlier. So this is B. Bring your feet to touch to prepare for chair, arms by your sides. Taking two rounds continuously, steady breaths. Bend your knees together. Inhale, sink your weight towards your heels, chair pose. Then exhale, bow forward. Inhale, lengthen halfway up. Either step to plank to lower or float back to chaturanga or take a cat-cow pose if you need to conserve your energy. 
When you arrive in downward dog, inhale, raise your right leg behind you. Exhale, step the foot forward so your feet are hips width apart and lower the back heel. With one inhale, rise up to warrior one facing forward. The entire exhale, lower into your choice of vinyasa or step straight to downward facing dog. From downward dog, inhale, raise your left leg. Then exhale, step it forward so your feet are hips width apart, drop the back heel. Inhale, rise up and face forward, warrior one. Exhale, lower all the way, your choice of vinyasa. This time in downward dog, let's take three to five breaths. Repacing the breath. And perhaps realigning your focus to your intention for this practice. With bent knees, look ahead of your hands and of your exhalation, land at the top. Breathe in to lengthen forward. Exhale to fold. Feet together, knees together. Inhale, sit low in chair pose. Exhale to rise up. Last round, Surya Namaskar B. Inhale to chair, Utkatasana. Exhale to fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, half fold. Step or lightly jump back. Insert your vinyasa. When you arrive in downward dog, inhale, raise your right leg. Exhale, step it forward, feet hips distance, back heel down. Inhale, rise up to warrior one. Exhale, lower, vinyasa. Breathe in. Exhale, back to downward dog. Last side, inhale, raise the left leg. Exhale, step it forward, feet hips distance, back heel down. Inhale, rise to warrior one. Exhale, lower, vinyasa. Child's pose is available anytime it's needed. Just feel into the space you're in right now for a few breaths. As you're ready to wrap up this round, bend your knees, look forward. Bottom of the breath, lightly land. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold. With knees bent, inhale to chair pose. Now imagine there's wall behind your back, extend the arms forward and slowly lower your pelvis to the ground to sit. I think you'll like this one. We're not going to bow. So extend your left leg straight ahead, flex the foot. Place your right hand behind your pelvis on the floor. And with your left hand in front of your right shin, catch hold of the outside of your right foot and flex it as you kick the leg slowly forward to whatever degree you can straighten that leg so that your spine is upright. More important that the spine is upright. Relax the shoulders down, breathe in, press through your sitting bones so you're flexing both feet and lengthen the spine. Breathe out and turn your chest to the right to twist. Now you might like to raise the right arm straight back, look towards the right thumb. Keep getting taller and taller with each inhalation. Shoulders stay relaxed as you continue to twist. Feel where you're twisting right under your lowest ribs. Let's take three more breaths. So your two sitting bones are firmly grounded, keeping the pelvis still and supporting your lower back. Ringing out across the middle of the torso. Also helping to promote digestion, just like that bellows breath that we started with. Now at your exhale, look forward and set your right leg down. We're gonna go right to the other side. Bend your left knee, uh, place your left hand behind your pelvis on the floor, cross your right hand in front of your left shin and catch the outer foot. Flex both feet and slowly kick the left leg forward. Just the amount that your spine can be upright and your shoulders relaxed. Now, as you flex both feet, ground through the sitting bones and breathe in, lift up through the center of your spine. 
Breathe out and turn your chest to the left. Maybe reach the left arm off the floor behind you and perhaps look towards it. Keep getting taller and taller as you breathe in. Shoulders relax, twisting a little more as you breathe out. Let's take three more full breaths. Nice. At the end of this exhale, look forward, cross your shins or swing your legs to one side, however you want to get back to downward facing dog. You could even cross the shins and jump back into chaturanga if you want to take a vinyasa, up to you. But when you do arrive in downward facing dog, re-steady the breath through the nose, then inhale, raise the right leg up. As you exhale, bend the right knee and turn open at the hip. Inner thighs splay apart. Keep relaxing your neck. Try to evenly ground both hands so your arms are equally long, not twisting at the shoulders. Now, some of you stay here. You might rotate the right leg or some of you flip it over into tripod. We warmed up quite a bit already to do that into a back bend. If you're going to tripod, the ball of your right foot lands on the outside of your mat and the left leg stays straight. You're leaning on the outer edge of the left foot flex. And by lifting the pelvis up, you can easily drop the head back and open the chest, reaching the right hand towards the front of the mat. Deep breath in, slow breath out. Whatever you're doing, come back to three-legged downward facing dog. Take a deep breath as you lift the right heel behind you. Then exhale, step the right foot slowly outside of your right hand, come into a lizard lunge. You can decide if you want to place your back knee on the floor or not, but take your choice of variation. There's so many. You could open up into the glute of your right leg a little more by flexing the right foot and splaying the thigh open. Just make sure not to collapse onto your outer ankle. You could increase the intensity of this hip opener by coming down lower to your forearms. Just take your time. We'll be here for about five more breaths. You could stretch into your left quadricep by bending the left knee and back stroking the right arm to catch hold of the left foot, which also helps to open the front of your right shoulder. Smoothen out the quality of your breath. Feel your right outer hip gently scissoring towards the rear of your mat as your torso is lengthening towards the front of your mat. Take a full breath in, feel the belly expand too. And exhaling. Let's prepare for warrior two. So set your two hands in front of you and step your right foot directly between your hands. Straighten your back leg and spin that heel down, aligning your right heel to the arch of your left foot. Then windmill the arms apart to rise up. Now bring your hands to your hips for a moment <clears throat> and feel how your pelvis, the shape of a bull, is oriented right now. Is it tilting lower on the left or right side, possibly on the right side. See if you can align it. You wanna make sure the left leg is turning inward slightly, the foot is even turning inward, the right leg is completely turning out towards the front. And as the pelvis is more upright, what muscles need to be engaged to support that so that the pelvis doesn't dump towards the left edge of your mat. So just feel into that and now, as the pelvis might sink a little more, if you want a strong warrior two pose or rigorous one, bend the front knee 90 degrees just over the heel. You decide what you need right now and then lift up the rib cage. Lift up the back ribs, keep drawing the tailbone down, make space in the lower back, open up the chest and then reopen your arms. Feel the reach through your fingertips really helping to broaden the collarbones, broaden the upper back. But at the same time, relax the tops of your shoulders down. This trapezius muscle can overwork. So allow it to release here as you lift up through the top of your head. Steadying your gaze, just past the right hand or maybe eyes closed. If you need more relief for your shoulders, try flipping your palms to face up. That can help to relax the trapezius a bit too. It can be peaceful to bring the thumb and index fingers to touch. Now let's take three more breaths, whatever variation you're in. Try 
Pressing down through both of your feet, straighten your legs for triangle and slide your hips towards the rear edge of your mat. Reach the right hand past your right knee and lower it onto your leg or just to the right side of your leg, right up against it. And make sure that the height at which you place your right hand still allows your right hip to wrap slightly under your body so you're not compressing this right side of your lower back. You're actually creating more space in it as you direct the tailbone towards your left heel. Now feel your spine and lengthen it from your pelvis towards the front and center of your mat. If you're able to, look up towards the left thumb, unless it doesn't feel good on your neck. Shoulder blades down the back, chest turning slightly towards the sky. Let's take about three more breaths. Notice how the legs are engaged here, front of the thigh, so that you could lighten the weight of your right hand. Does it feel like you're collapsing all your weight down to that right hand? This is definitely a spine lengthening posture among many other physical benefits. Now look at the floor in front of your right foot. Let's prepare for half moon. You might like to place the left hand on your left hip as we transition. Steady your eyes ahead, steady your breathing and bend your right knee. Walk your right fingertips forward and to the right of your right foot. If you have a block, you can place it there and then drag the left foot forward and flex that foot as you lift that heel to the height of your hip, just about. And turn your chest completely to face the left wall so that you're able to stack your left shoulder above your right shoulder, above your right wrist. Now, if you feel pretty stable, you might raise the left arm up. You might lift a finger or more of your right hand or take full moon pose where you bend the left knee towards the belly and catch the foot, however you wanna vary it. Steady your breathing, maybe three or so more breaths. When you decide to come out of it, straightening the left leg, try to softly step into warrior two again. And once both feet are on the ground, warrior two, flip the right palm to face up and lift it overhead towards the rear of your mat in a lateral stretch, peaceful warrior. Just a couple of breaths here. Deep inhale. Then exhale, lower your hands to the floor. Optional vinyasa if you need to flow a bit more. Otherwise, meet a straight and downward facing. Deep inhalation, fill up your lungs, your belly, cleaning exhalation. Now arriving in downward dog, inhale, raise the left leg. Bend your left knee and turn open at the hip. Now feel that your two shoulders are evenly facing the ground. We're not turning the shoulders, trying to keep them balanced. Now either stay here, rotate the left leg where you are, or begin to flip it over into tripod back bend, also known as wild thing, where you step the ball of the left foot outside the right edge of your mat, keep the right leg straight, flex the right foot so you're leaning on the outer edge of it, and then you lift the pelvis and drop the head back, reaching left arm overhead. Feel the heart space broaden and lift. Whatever version, take one more deep breath. and make your way back to three-legged downward facing dog with your hips squared. And three-legged downward dog, breathe in and press the left heel back. Exhale, slowly step the left foot just outside of your left hand coming into lizard lunge. Decide to either keep the right knee lifted or place it on the ground. Try to go for the same variation you did on the first side. See that it's balanced. If you're focusing more on the outer hip, the glute, flex the left foot and splay the thigh open, leaning on the outer edge of the foot, but not the ankle. If you just want overall more intensity, you can come down to your forearms. If you want to include your right quadricep, bend the right knee, backstroke the left arm, and catch hold of your right foot. Let's be here for five more deep breaths, attentive to the space that you're holding for yourself mentally and physically.
Finishing this breath, let's start to make your way into warrior two, placing both hands at the top of your mat and stepping the left foot directly between them. And with the right leg straight, spin the back heel down, align the left heel to the arch of your right foot, then cartwheel your arms to rise up. Then bring your hands to your hip bones, holding your pelvis and feel its orientation. As the right leg turns in slightly to face the front, the left leg completely turning out to face the front, align your pelvis as neutrally upright as you can, trying to balance out both hips. And notice what muscles need to engage to help that. And then lifting up the rib cage, you might even use your hands to manually lift the lowest ribs. Allow the tailbone to descend, maybe bending the left knee 90 degrees if you want that much rigor in it. Keeping the heart lifted, open the arms and actively reach out through your fingertips. Now focus on the trapezius muscles from your neck through the tops of your shoulders and upper back. Relax that area. Soften the shoulders down. You might even flip the palms up to help relax it. Maybe thumb and index, fingers to touch to help focus. Just steady your gaze and let's take three more full breaths in Virabhadrasana 2. Pressing down through both feet, straighten your legs. Let's prepare for triangle. Sliding your hips sideways towards the back of your mat and reaching the left hand past your left knee, then down onto your leg or just to the left of it. Right up against the leg. Now feel into how high or low you need to place your left hand today. Might be different from the last time or even the left side. Just so that left outer hip can rotate slightly under your body. You feel no impingement in the left side of your lower back or even hip. And you're able to draw the tailbone more actively towards the right heel. The spine lengthening from the pelvis so the crown is reaching towards the front and center of your mat. As you open the arms, open your chest and feel how much space you're allowing in your neck. If you're able to look up towards the right thumb, turn your chest slightly to, to face up. Let's take three more breaths in Uddita Trikonasana. Notice how you're engaging the fronts of your thighs to allow less weight on your left hand, even engaging the sides of the waist and the belly. One more deep breath. So this is the blueprint or same shape as half moon pose we're about to get into. But as you transition, look down at your at the ground in front of your left foot, steady your gaze there. You might place the right hand on your right hip, steady your breath, bend your left knee, crawl your left fingertips forward into the left of your left foot, maybe on a block and drag your right foot forward, flexing the foot, lifting the heel about the height of your hip. Now be strong in that lifted leg as if you're actually pressing against the wall at the rear of your mat. Open your chest entirely to face the right wall and feel that your right shoulder is stacking above the left shoulder, above the left wrist. Maybe play raising the right arm or bending the right knee towards the belly to catch the top of the foot. Ardha Chandra Chapasana. Feel your body breathing. Feel your mind befriending your body here. So you decide maybe a few more breaths and then you step as lightly as you can back to warrior two. Take your time. When you do arrive in warrior two, Flip the left palm to face up and lift it overhead towards the rear of your mat in Peaceful Warrior. Couple of deep breaths, especially down your left side body. So before we lower to the ground, let's keep the feet this wide apart, straighten both legs and parallel your feet to face the wide width of your mat. Bring your hands behind you and interlace your fingers or hold a strap between the hands, opening the chest. 
Bend your elbows closer together and breathe in to lift the heart. Look up. Exhale, hinge from your hips and keep lengthening your spine, maybe even bending the knees to allow more length in the spine as you fold. Now tilting your weight forward, feel it get heavier on the balls of your feet and lifting your arms forward away from your lower back. Let your head completely relax down, soften your neck and jaw while you lift your shoulder bones up away from your neck. Let's take just about three more breaths here in this version of Prasarita Parottanasana. Wide-legged forward fold. Getting the blood flowing reverse too, stimulating circulation, digestion, while opening up shoulders, neck, and all of the back of the body. Let's take a lion's breath, this last one. Deeply inhale. Open your eyes and mouth wide and stick out your tongue. Exhale. Lower your fingertips. We're gonna come into Skandasana. So turn out both of your legs from the hips. Pivot your feet to turn out only as much as your knees can turn out. And bend your left knee. So moving towards the rear of your mat. Bend the left knee and curl up the right toes and flex the foot. You're in Skandasana. Open up the inner thighs. Try to make sure that your knees are in line with the middle toes underneath them. Doesn't matter how it turned out, but just try to keep that alignment. And then let's pass through a wide-legged squat to switch sides. Bend the opposite knee, flex the foot of your straight leg as you begin to sink the pelvis. Breathe. Try to relax the face here. Notice if there's any tensing in the neck, the shoulders, the jaw. Let's do one more on each side. Come into a wide-legged squat, both knees bent, both legs turned out, and flex the foot of the straight leg sinking the hips breathe in breathe out last time keep both thighs open bending both knees pass through center in a squat and then switch flex the foot of the straight leg breathe in breathe out now we're towards the front of the mat rotate your straight leg from the hip and come into a lunge to face the front of your mat. Place both hands at the front and take one last vinyasa if you want to. Otherwise, we'll meet in child's pose. Breathe in and breathe out. So we're going to set up for a posture that helps to open up the upper back, especially the lats, the shoulders. If you have two yoga blocks, that's optimal or ideal to place them like an equal sign right here at the front of your mat. So they're both on their medium height like this. I only have one, so I'm not going to do that. And then you'll want them shoulders width apart. If you don't have two blocks, then place your two elbows on the floor exactly shoulders distance apart. Otherwise, elbows are on the center of each block. And then press your fingertips into each other so you, there's space between your palms. And walk your knees just slightly behind your hips so your torso has a little more space here. Start to trace your thumbs down the center back of your skull towards the back of your neck towards your shoulder blades as far as you can trace them while rotating your triceps, your outer upper arms downward towards the ground like you would in downward facing dog. Lowering the head to whatever degree you can. Use the floor or the blocks to push off of with your upper arms and elbows so that you can slide the shoulder blades back away from your neck. Let your heart melt towards the earth, meaning let your chest sink closer to the ground, but don't let the belly dump down. So lift the belly, engage the abdomen slightly so that you're supporting your lower back to lengthen. Keep drawing your sitting bones back. Lengthen the sides of your torso from armpits to outer hips. Let's take four more deep breaths here. Now keeping your hips above your knees or slightly above your knees, 
Begin to extend your arms straight forward. If you have blocks, remove them, get them out of the way. And let's come into puppy dog pose. So your hands are flat or you're on your fingertips. Straighten the arms forward and begin to sink your chest, your throat towards the ground, but keep lifting the belly. Try not to overarch the lower back here. The tailbone will stick up though. And if it feels open enough in your shoulders, look forward between your thumbs. Feel the armpits hollow up away from the floor. So this is a bit of a back bend as the chest sinks. Let's take two more breaths here. And from here, slither forward all the way onto your stomach. So your legs are straight on the ground, pelvis is on the ground. And let's lean the right ear either on a block, slightly off to the right like this, or on the floor. And slide your right arm straight out to the right. Or if you want a little more intense shoulder opener, bend the elbow like this, like a 90 degree, and place your forearm onto the floor. Then use your left hand to press the floor away and roll onto your right side, your right hip. If your right elbow is bent, slide that right forearm further out to the right, just enough so you're not right on top of your right shoulder. You're opening up the chest into the front of the right shoulder. And then slide the right shoulder blade down your back. You might even like to step the left foot behind you or play with reaching the left arm behind you. Just do what feels good here for three more breaths. Consciously relax the jaw, relax behind the ears, relax the forehead. And as you breathe out, slowly roll onto your belly and begin to switch sides. Try to go for the same version of the pose as you just did. So maybe there's a block under your left ear. Maybe you're bending the left elbow out to the left or the arm is straight out to the left. With the help of the right hand, roll over to your left hip. And then again, make sure that you're not right on top of your left shoulder. It's slightly behind you here. Just slide the left forearm a little more to the left if you need to. Slide the left shoulder blade down your back. And then how's the breathing? Let's take three more cycles, any variation you want to explore. And as you breathe out, roll onto your belly. Let's slide into doll, um, excuse me, Sphinx pose <laughs> for just a few breaths to seal in both sides. So elbows are slightly in front of the shoulders, forearms are parallel, palms are flat. And then just soften the shoulder blades down the back, especially as you breathe out. You might want to take some long exhales through the mouth. Let's breathe into, st into the stomach. And out through the mouth. Into the belly. Out through the mouth. One more really long exhale into the belly. Deep exhale through the mouth. Walk your hands back. Press your body upright to sit with your legs in front of you. Straightening the legs for Paschimottanasana. Separate your feet hips width apart and flex them. Ground your sitting bones, lift the spine tall, and then extend your heart forward to folds. With your hands, hold on to something, if not a strap, then your legs, your big toes, and then keep lifting the center of your chest. Keep opening your throat. Feel your pelvis rooted as, you, as your spine lengthens from it. Let's take three more breaths. Leading from the chest, breathe in to slowly rise up. This last movement we're gonna do is to really help us drop into Shavasana. So 
bend your knees, lower onto your back, and open your arms wide apart, straight apart. Soften the shoulder blades down the back, neutral curvature in the neck. Press your palms face down flat and feel your shoulders glued to the ground. Keep them glued to the ground. Lift your feet so that your shins are parallel to the floor. Knees are together and bent. Either point or flex your feet. Take a deep breath. Let your lower back sink closer to the ground. Belly engages. Then exhale, lower your knees slowly to hover to the right side off the floor without lifting the left shoulder from the ground and without collapsing the legs. Then inhale, slowly lift the knees up to center again. Exhale, slowly hover the knees to the left off the floor, keeping the right shoulder grounded. Inhale, slow and control, lift the knees up to center. Now keep the knees bent or straighten the legs and hover the legs over to the right. If the legs are straight, the ankles might reach for your right fingertips. Inhale the legs up. Exhale to the left. Now take at least one more round. That's both sides on your own pace of breath. Feel free to take it more times if you, if you like. Keeping stability in the shoulders, the head. Steadiness, softness in the breath. Soft face, strong center. Peaceful inner strength in the center. This is also a nice way to release the lower back a bit more. When you feel like you've done enough, evenly on both sides, take your choice of lifting the legs up higher than your heart. Happy, might, happy baby might be a welcoming pose here. If you are taking happy baby, try to ground your tailbone, ground your shoulders. And just for another half a minute, any last movement or pose to help you completely unwind for Shavasana. Find a comfortable position to rest in. You might even like Supta Baddha Konasana, which is a hip opening posture of lying on your back with your knees bent apart and the soles of the feet together. You might also place a block under each outer thigh or some support under the legs. Just take the position that your body likes best to be still and rest in as you close your eyes. Maybe take one more deep exhalation through the mouth. Releasing control of your breathing.
So we've got about two or three more minutes left in the practice. If you'd like to stay in Shavasana, feel free. Otherwise, find a comfortable position to meditate in. I'm going to guide you through a self-compassion meditation. If you're choosing to sit for it, you might even like to sit on top of something like a block so that you feel really grounded and upright, being able to relax the body. Now, as you sit tall, maybe with the eyes closed, and feel your body naturally breathing. In the short practice, I invite you to recall a situation in your life right now that is mildly to moderately difficult for you. A situation in which you feel some sort of stress. As you breathe through this, feel into that situation in your mind's eye, picturing what's involved, people, places, words said. And feeling into that difficult situation, choose a way to say to yourself that this is a moment of suffering. This was a hard situation for you. Just a moment to validate the difficulty of it. Keep feeling your body breathing. And in the second part, find your own language that speaks to you and saying that suffering itself is a part of life. It's a common trait of humanity. It's part of life. Still feeling the breath. And lastly, with some kind of physical gesture of kindness to yourself, maybe placing your hands to stack at your heart or even giving yourself an embrace, something that physically feels comforting. In your own words, give the message May I be kind to myself in this moment. May I be kind to myself in this moment. Now with your breath, your body, how you're feeling. Just allowing space for it right now. If you are still lying down, slowly make your way up to join us sitting. Perhaps bringing your hands to meet at your heart as you bow in. A gesture of acknowledging the light within yourself. as well as the light within each other as we bow in to the heart. Let's close with one ohm. Take a deep breath. Oh. The light 
light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste.